So you hear a loud knocking on the door at night time, and it is your flatmate's kid knocking on the door, banging. What do you do in that circumstance? I would murder the kid. That makes sense. It's probably better than what OP did in our first story today, guys. <laughs> G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the arsehole. For the introduction, I'm joined by J Mick. Hello. You can go find his channel on YouTube, I will link it down in the comments. Uh, if you guys like today's story, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good content. Let's go. <laughs> am I the arsehole for calling the police on my flatmate's kid knocking on my door? Disclaimer, not in the USA, English is not my first language. So I, female 22, live in a shared house with the landlord and his two sons, and a woman and her daughter. Yesterday, the landlord and his kids were away visiting some family, and the other woman works a crazy schedule. I was sleeping in my room when I was woken up by the kid, female 8, screaming like crazy at about 2am. I figured the mother was not home, so I put on my headphones, but in a few minutes she was banging on my door, still screaming and crying. I panicked, thinking something horrible was going on outside, so I shut myself in my room's bathroom and called the police, and they could hear the screaming on the call, so they came very quickly. It turns out the kid had a nightmare and was really scared, and the paramedics had to give her some medicine to calm her down. Then the police asked me a lot of questions, like if I was the guardian, to explain our living situation, if I knew where the mother was, etc. I told them that I was not aware the kid was alone because the mother has a crazy schedule and I don't know where she works. I provided her phone number, but they couldn't reach her, so they took the kid to the police station. I went back to sleep and woke up to the mother banging on my door and screaming at me for what happened yesterday. She said the police won't give her daughter back and I'm an asshole for calling them for something as silly as a nightmare, that I should have just calmed the kid down instead of making it a huge deal. I told her that it's not my responsibility to take care of her daughter. I barely interact with any of them and I was not going to open my door to someone screaming like crazy because it could be dangerous. I think it was the right choice to call the police. But I told the situation to my mother, and she says either way, I should have checked on the kid and tried to help, because sharing a house also means helping out with these kind of things. I'm sorry, OP. You're crazy. You are insane. Why did you lock yourself in the bathroom and call the police? I don't know why you did what you did. That is a crazy overreaction when at first you ignored the kid by putting your headphones in. That just tells me that it, it was a non-situation from the get-go. It was a kid screaming. And as soon as she comes banging on your door asking for help from something, you barricade yourself in the bathroom and call the police? I don't know. I, I guess there's an argument there for something to do with the mother and leaving the daughter there in the house with all these people that are there to look after her while she's on shift work and I imagine she needs to make money. But I don't think that's a valid reason for your actions here. I think you wildly overreacted to this situation and caused a lot of damage and harm in this family situation they've got going on. I blame you for this. You're the asshole. Now in the comments, you all suck 22 says, I find it odd that your immediate response to hearing a crying and screaming child is to lock yourself up and call the police without even attempting to check on the child. This is coming from someone who's child free, not a mother. Yeah, it's not your kid and not your responsibility, and the mother obviously shouldn't have left the child home alone, quote unquote, but damn, that's some really selfish behavior. I want to say you're the asshole, but I have to lean more towards everyone sucks here. Mother was in the wrong for leaving her kids solo, but you were definitely wrong for not even checking on the kid and just taking care of yourself. And edit, for all those saying, oh, they use crying kids to trap women for sex trafficking, OP literally said it's a shared house that they all live in, and she knew that it was her roommate's kid. So yes, OP is still in the wrong and selfish and an asshole for her actions. Like, what would have happened if there was an intruder or a fire? The kid deals with it on their own until the cops show up? It wasn't remotely acceptable for the parents to leave the kid with only OP there, but this response is horrifyingly selfish. I was afraid that there was something terrible outside, so I left a kid outside my door to handle it themselves. 
Not a stellar response from anyone. It could have been a spider on the toilet, for frick's sake. I was afraid there was something terrible outside, so I locked my door. Translates to, take the small child and spare me, murderous intruder. You're the asshole. This reminds me of a Stephen King short story, where a man knowingly lets the boogeyman take his toddler son rather than respond to his screams. MCCM says, So you weren't in the wrong for calling the police? But I'm not sure what kind of person leaves a hysterical eight-year-old alone to fend for themselves while they hide in a bathroom. I'm going with you're the asshole, as there's no getting past that for me. I agree with calling the police. Kind of. We all seem to glaze past the part where OP initially put on the headphones to drown the kid out. Clearly, OP was not in fear, so I call BS on the reasoning for calling the police. Mum should not have left the kid. However, OP would be hard-pressed to have handled this situation much worse. You're the asshole, and then some. Unexposed is by user InfiniteFix5023. Titled... Am I the asshole for telling my sister that the adoptive parents have a point for no longer contacting her? My sister gave birth to her twins, boy and girl, in June of 2020. She had been living with me before then after being evicted. I have three kids and work full time, and I told her if she was going to keep her babies, she was going to have to find other living spaces. I have a two bedroom and it's cramped already, and I'm not sacrificing my room to share with her and two newborns. And she said okay. When she was six months pregnant, she said she was going to give her babies up for adoption and contacted this top adoption agency. They sent her a pamphlet of potential parents. I was shocked since she never brought up giving them up for adoption. I felt guilty and told her that if she got a job and paid me 400 a month, maybe we could find a three bedroom. She said she doesn't want to be a mum, and she's made up her mind. She ended up choosing a very wealthy couple for her baby. They both made six figures and had a very clean, squeaky look to them. I told her they looked stuck up, and she said that she wanted her twins to live an upper-class lifestyle. The agency and couple flew her out to their city in a five-star hotel for the rest of her pregnancy. It was supposed to be an open adoption, and when my sister came back, they did send pictures once a month by mail. When the twins were about six months, all of a sudden they ghosted my sister, deleted all their social media handles to probably create new ones, and even moved. My sister had a breakdown, and I was equally shocked. The agency brushed her off and said the parents have the right to do whatever they want, and told her not to call again unless she was pregnant. For weeks I pitied my sister until she got drunk and told me something. She said that she texted the adoptive mom and that she needed 2k because she wants to go back to school or something. And the mom told her that she doesn't feel comfortable with my sister messaging her asking for money. And my sister told her that they're beyond rich and 2k is what they spend in a day. So they're not hurting and that's when they ghosted her. That changed things for me. And I told my sister that she shouldn't have done that and that maybe they had a point. She started crying and is still giving me the cold shoulder, and I want to know, am I the asshole? I feel like you're not the asshole for saying that to her. I feel like she had that coming with the way that she's acted in this situation. That's unacceptable behavior, the agency agrees, and the agency is going to work in its own best interests. Obviously, these adoptive parents are going to continue to work in the best interests of themselves and of the children. If they have an abusive mother that wants to stick around in the picture, and they're not obligated to keep it an open adoption, why, why, why would they put up with her behavior and continue to enable it or allow it? And what you said to her, OP, is not the worst thing you could have said either. So really, you let her down gracefully. You got the point across without hurting her feelings all too much. That open adoption was a privilege, and she just set that privilege on fire. Let that be a lesson to her not to do this again, to people, or especially to adoptive families like that if she ever does it again. So my vote is not the asshole. Now in the comments, MSB334 says, Not the asshole. She chose rich parents so she could get something out of it. The adoptive parents realized this and went no contact. Hopefully she realizes her mistake and doesn't pull this if her biological kids ever try to contact her. And OP replies, that's what I thought too. 
I told her to choose another couple that seemed sweeter, but she only cared about money. And to edit for those confused, there's a lot of options to choose from in the book they send you, and my top choice sadly wasn't chosen. I hope they do end up adopting a baby one day, whoever they are. They seemed very chill. My sister said she wanted her kids to have rich parents. I don't think choosing a couple that seemed sweeter really would have helped the situation. Even the sweetest couple ever would be questioning her motives and ability to maintain healthy boundaries after asking for money like that, which I also suspect was a greater amount than 2000 And yeah, I have a feeling there was more than just asking for $2,000 that led them to not only cut off contact, but delete their socials and move. You were definitely not the asshole. And OP replies, me too, but sadly I think I shut her out and she won't ever tell me the full truth. She's a very impulsive spender, so I see her asking for way more than that. Maybe that was the last straw and they actually sent her money before in the past. I'm not sure. Well, they funded her life when she was living in the five-star hotel, so I'm certain they gave her way more than that. Not the asshole. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she expected them to just give her money because of them putting her up in a five-star hotel. I bet she got spoiled and didn't like losing that lifestyle. And yeah, not the asshole. It sounds like Sis was hoping the adoptive parents would be a cash cow for her. But once the adoption is final, they hold all the cards. Unexposed is by user Wizardad. Titled... Am I the asshole for not wanting to change our newborn's diapers at night? So my partner and I have a five-week-old baby who is exclusively breastfed. He will wake up three to four times a night to nurse for 20 to 40 minutes per time. My argument is that she's already awake to nurse, so she should do the diaper changes too. I've offered to do half the diaper changes, but that's not enough for her. My partner thinks I should do all the nighttime diaper changes since she is breastfeeding. Her argument is that since she's nursing day and night, it's only fair. She says she needs to go to the bathroom, drink water, etc. while I'm changing the diaper. In her view, I'm often grouchy, need to be asked multiple times to get up, and sometimes argue if he even needs to be changed. And some more relevant information. We're both on paternal leave now, and when I go back to work in construction, I need a full 8 hours sleep. She will be on leave for the next 18 months. We go to bed at 9pm, and when I get up with our dogs at 6am, she's up with the baby an hour or two later. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Why did you come here? Why? Why did you come to ask this question? It's so obvious you're the asshole. You're on paternal leave right now. You literally have no other excuse to be fulfilling your parental duties. It's not like you're working a 16 hour a day job constantly, seven days a week. And even then you would be an asshole for taking those hours because you're neglecting your family. There is no universe, there is no exception, there is nothing you can say to not be the asshole in this situation. So yes, you're the asshole. I don't know why you don't realize that. Now in the comments, Topaz Monk says, Hardcore, you're the asshole. Your wife is exhausted, physically, and due to lack of sleep. You have no excuse, especially while you're on parental leave. She does need to use the bathroom, drink water, whatever, to take care of herself so she can take care of your son. Parenthood is about shared responsibilities and partnership. You need to grow up and share the burden. Your wife is asking for help during an extremely mentally, emotionally, and physically fragile time. You have a brand new baby. If for no other reason than being a good husband in a time where she needs support, why would you reject that? Why do you expect her to shoulder all of it? Are you trying to train her for when you go back to work? I have bad news for you, Chief. The, but I need eight hours of sleep excuse is incredibly selfish, and you are due for a rude awakening. This is the time that you and your wife should be bonding, as partners, as warriors locked shoulder to shoulder for the incredibly difficult job of raising a kid. It should be a time for you to reaffirm your commitments to each other, with compassion and support. This period will absolutely shape the tone and future of your marriage as well, and you're planting really selfish seeds that tend to bloom into lovely turd blossoms down the path. There's only room for one baby in your family, and it's not you. 
It's time to be a dad. It's hard, but tough crap. This is your moment to decide what kind of father and ultimately husband you want to be. I wish I could upvote this comment a thousand times. This phase 100% sets the tone for the relationship going forward, the way most tough things do. After this, she's going to know whether OP is in it as a team for the long haul or if he's just in it for himself. Yes, this. I've had two babies with my ex-husband. He's never gotten up to help with feeding and support. I'd even hand him the baby to hold so I could have a shower, and he would be knocking on the door to hand the baby back literally five minutes in. His excuse? Well, you have the boobs. Let me tell you, this relationship didn't last. The best Peter says, you're the asshole. Man the F up and help do your part, dude. Holy crap. None of us have ever liked getting up and changing the kids' diapers, but you're a father now. Act like it. Man, I don't understand some people. When they decide to have a kid, do they think it's a cakewalk? Do they think it's going to be like in the movies where everything is colourful with soft light and smiling babies? Parenthood is hard, and is a joint responsibility. You have to sacrifice some sleep, time, money, and headspace. Why have a kid if you're not ready? My god, that poor woman. You're the asshole. Unexposed is by user, Am I the Asshole Dancing Half Naked? Titled, Am I the Asshole for Dancing Half Naked in My Living Room, Leading to My Boyfriend and His Family Seeing Me? This is so, so, so embarrassing, but I can't take it anymore. I have to know if I'm in the wrong here. I need to apologize if so. So I, 21 female, was told by my boyfriend Nate, 26 male, that I'd get the house to myself for the weekend. He said he had to go visit his parents to take care of a property-related issue. I was pretty excited to have the house to myself, because I have been living with Nate since I was 19, and I missed living alone. Though Nate is the love of my life, and in no way a trouble to live with. I had this tradition of spending a lot of my weekends baking while in lingerie. I don't know, it makes me feel pretty. And yes, I know it's stupid, but it just makes me stupid happy. With music and dancing. Super embarrassing to admit, but I also do silly things like pretending I'm a Victoria's Secret model or a singer, and I sing along, loudly. I mentioned this because this means the house is usually a mess. My dresses are all over, and the music is super loud, which is obviously not okay. I hadn't done that in a long time, because Nate hates loud music, and he's not a fan of my cupcakes. So I decided to do it this weekend. So it's Sunday, and I put on What a Feeling by One Direction, and it's super loud. I'm only wearing lingerie, the Victoria's Secret kind, so it's lacy AF, which I regret so much looking back. My boyfriend used his key to open the door, and I didn't hear him come in, because like I said, it's loud in the house, and I'm also in the kitchen slash living room area. Apparently he wanted to surprise me. Nate brought his mum, dad, and his sister's two kids, only like 10 male, I think. They come in, and there I am, frozen in a dance pose like an idiot. I quickly ran to our room yelling, sorry, wasn't expecting anyone, and was putting on clothes when Nate came in. He was so angry. He said I was acting like a child and that I embarrassed him. His parents wanted Nate to drop them back ASAP, refusing to stay, and his mum called me a lot of names and said the kids had seen everything, and that made me guilty AF. Here's why I'm losing sleep over this. On one hand, I didn't know they would come. I locked the door too, so I feel like I didn't do anything wrong. I planned on cleaning up my mess before Nate came home too. Also, Nate and his mum insulted me a lot. But when you look at it from their perspective, I was behaving like an immature person. The house was a mess, I looked like a mess, and there were baking supplies scattered. Nate just wanted to surprise me and do something nice. Nate is still not completely talking to me, and I don't know how to face his family. And I also know his sister told him to make me behave or something, so I feel like I should apologize before making things get worse, but I can't decide for sure if I'm in the wrong here, so I need your help. Thank you for reading. And edit to add, Nate's family is also really conservative, and he was brought up like that as well. Someone mentioned I should have added this in. 
Also, I'm from the United States, since a lot of people asked. I personally don't think you've done anything wrong here. They're just overreacting and being assholes about this because they can be. Like, what other valid reasons do they have to be angry in this situation? I feel like they just want to yell at you for something. And if that's what you want to put up with, then continue the relationship with this guy. But if it were me, I'd be having a serious talk about their behavior and his reaction to this. So, not the asshole. I don't think you could be the asshole for this one. Now in the comments, Tonka141 says, Not the asshole. You should never be embarrassed for dancing like an idiot to a song you like. Who cares that you were in underwear? No one was at home at the time. Oh, and giving you the silent treatment is a huge red flag. It's emotional abuse. And OP replies, Thank you. I feel a bit relieved. Oh, and to be fair, it's not the silent treatment. He's talking to me, but I can tell he's still angry. Nate is just a bunch of red flags wearing a human skin suit, okay? Throughout your post, you talk about how pretty this makes you feel, and how stupid happy you are whilst doing it, all while apparently feeling ashamed of how wrong and immature it is. He has made you feel as though something that makes you happy and is totally harmless is something to be ashamed of. A partner that insults you and makes you feel ashamed of yourself is not a partner. Yeah. Especially since the reason OP did this while he was out is because she wouldn't be able to do it while he was there. So she's having to sideline this part of her in the first place, and then he's disapproving that she was doing it at all. Meanwhile, he's 26 and she's 21, and she moved in when she was 19 and he would have been 24. That's not a major age gap later, but it's a pretty big experience gap at the start, especially with Nate waving so many red flags of disapproval and control. Seriously, I could, and may or may not have, dance around the house in my underwear to a song I'm making up as I go about. My cat and my boyfriend might raise an eyebrow, but he wouldn't make me feel bad about it. As long as I'm having fun, he says. If you have to wait for him to leave to do something you enjoy doing in your own damn home, there's something wrong. And I can think of almost no instances where I'd be mad coming home to a laughing, dancing, lingerie-wearing, baking, happy girlfriend, yet this dude goes on the attack, insulting her because of his and his parents' weird-ass sanctimonious hang-ups. Not the asshole. Nate is a total asshole here. He tells you that you'll have the apartment to yourself and then decides to surprise you with what exactly? A visit from his parents? Wow, what a great surprise. He has no right to be upset at you. You didn't know anyone was going to be home. He also has no right to insult you. Never in a relationship should your significant other insult you. And really, the best case scenario here is still a crappy surprise. At least warn someone so they can clean up around the place before you just invite company over. Wait, your boyfriend is angry at you because he walked in on you? Am I tracking this correctly? No, not the asshole. You're allowed to do what you want in your house. Why would he even bring people by without giving a heads up anyways? That's just so weird. And please don't get me started on mum. She's off her rocker. You don't get to insult someone in their home. You don't want to show? Send a text before just walking in. There is so much audacity here, I just don't even know. What I do know is you owe nobody an apology. You did nothing wrong. They owe you many. Their behavior was completely and utterly unacceptable, and you need to sit down and really evaluate and see what is happening here. This is in no way a normal, acceptable, or even reasonable response to their error. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below. And make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.